Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and make sure the book is in front of you at all times when you're watching this video because I want you to do the problems with me. Don't just sit there passively. Uh, we're going to pick up today our story from page number 344. Turn to it. Page 344, the very first problem there, problem number 10. If after having watched this video you find it useful and you decide that you would like to work with me, send me an email at Kishwani Prep, that's P R E P, Kishwani Prep at iCloud.com. Number 10. Number 10, we are told that 23% uh, saw movie at least once per week. So apparently, a survey was done on the campus, on a campus, where we went around and asked people how often they go to uh, movies, and 23% of people, 23% of the students said. We go to movie at least once a week. We are further told that in, in this particular survey, the margin of error, margin of error, is four percent. In other words, it can go plus or minus four percent either way. Do you understand? It can go four percent either way. Rather, to say it can go plus and minus either way, four percent is redundant. Do you understand? That's what plus. That's what plus or minus means. So, which means. What this implies, what this tells us is that between, this is between, between, that's even worse, between 23 minus 4 and 23 plus 4 percent of the people we, we can say that between this person, between this range people saw the movie at least once a week and that turns out to be 19 to 27%. What we can say is that between 90 to 27% of the students saw movie at least once a week. And that's the that's the conclusion that we can come up with. And simply, our job now is to simply find a statement out, out of the four answer choices that comes closest to conveying this concept. And that's answer choice D. Answer choice D. Pay attention. Answer choice C that they give you is wrong. Answer choice C is wrong because answer choice C says that the researcher is between 19 and 27 percent confident that the students go to a movie at least once a week. It is not the confidence of the researchers that this survey measures. No survey does this. Surveys do not go around. Surveys are not conducted to see how confident the researchers are. That's not, that's not how it is read. Uh, what, it, what, it, what it tells us is that if you were to pick one student at random, if you were to pick one student at random, we are between 19% and 27% confident. Uh, the, there is a 19 to 27% chance that these students goes to move theater once a week. You understand? Or to put another way, or to put another way, another way we can interpret that is that if we were to pick 100 students at random, if we were to pick 100 students at random, we will find that somewhere between 19 to 27 students out of that 100 will have gone to movies, or do go to movie once a week. Approximately one fifth to one quarter. Some, sometimes some of these questions require require a lot of talking. Number 11 is the next question. However, let's not do number 11 first. Let's do number 12 first. Because as I was doing it in my notes, I didn't have enough room on the page to do number 11. So I did number 12 first at the bottom of the page here. And then I did number 11. So let's do 12 first. Otherwise, I'll forget it. If I go to number 11 now, I might just go to the next page and I might forget the number 12. Let's take it look at number 12. Number 12 said that we are buying something which is right now 40% off. 
it is on sale, it is 40% off. And we are further told that the sale price is $18. The question simply is, if, the, if it is on sale right now at 40% off, and the price right now is $18, what must have been the full price? That's what it is. So, let's, let's see what we can do. If it is at 40% off right now, and the price right now, sale price right now is $18, then it is logical that this $18 must represent 60% of the original price. And that's all we have to understand. That's all we have to understand. 60% equals $18. If 60% equals $18, let's divide both sides by 6, which means 10% of the price must be $3. If 10% of the price is $3, then the 100% multiply both sides by 10. 10 times 3 is $30, and that must represent the full price. And that's all there is. And that was number 12. That was number 12. Now, let's do number 11 now, which is a little bit more elaborate. It will take a little bit of time. Number 11, they give us list of two. Uh, they give us uh, two two lists of numbers. List A and list B. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then list B. Two, three, three. 4, 4, and 5. And before I forget it, I'm going to give you something else to watch. In this problem, we are being asked to compare, we are being asked to make certain some statement about their respective means and the standard deviation. And it is the mean that I want to talk about right now, you might, and you might feel, you might say to yourself, well, that's silly, why is he making a big fuss? Everybody knows how to figure out the average. And that is precisely the problem, that everybody knows how to figure out the average, because everybody does it in a very traditional way, where you simply add up all the numbers and divide by number of numbers, which is not, there is nothing wrong with it. That is the traditional way, that is the proper way, that is the correct way, that is the orthodox classical academic way, but it's a very time consuming way. There is a quicker way to figure out the average, and in addition to average, the weighted average. Sometimes they ask about weighted average. If you want to learn how to figure out the, uh, how to figure out the average and the weighted average quickly, and how to compare the weight, weighted average or the average, go to my, go on the YouTube, you will find, just search for basic math, basic math, and then type in the day number. From day 68 to 76, you don't have to watch all the videos, watch at least two or three, watch at least the first two or three, 68, 69, 70 at least. It goes, goes all the way up to 76. And then there are three more videos, day 93, 94, and 95. The higher the number, the more difficult the problem gets. There are a series of 100 videos, and the series is called Basic Math. And it is called Basic Math because it starts out with very, very, believe, believe it or not, Basic Math. But as the numbers go on, it becomes progressively more difficult. So, what's the average of these six numbers here? That's first, first we have to compare the average, and then we have to compare the standard deviation, and then pick the answer choice that, that, that agrees with what, what, what we arrive at, what conclusion we arrive at. What can we say about the averages? Well, the task list is very straightforward. If instead of six numbers, if you only had five numbers, and as long as they are evenly spaced, they don't have to be consecutive. Here they are consecutive by fluke, but they don't have to be consecutive. In other words, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if we had 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, as long as they are evenly spaced, and as, as long as we have odd number of numbers, the average is the middle number. If we do not have odd number of numbers, like here we have 6 numbers, then that's not a big deal. The average is simply the, the average of the middle two numbers. The average of 3 and 4 is 3 and a half. So that was very straightforward. But now we have to figure out the average of this guy. Do we go around 
doing the traditional way, 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, it will take forever. Let's, let's just assume we're going to pretend that the average for the second series, the list B, is 3. I'm just going to pretend it. We're just going to pretend it and we'll see where it takes us. If the average is 3, then obviously this guy is not 3. This is 1 less than 3 and this guy is 1 less, one more than 3. Why don't we take away $1 from him and give the dollar to him? Think of this in terms of money. If you take away a dollar from him and give it to him, now he's three, he's three, he's three, he's three. Aha, but this guy has an extra dollars, and this guy has an extra dollars. If he did not have these three extra dollars, this guy sitting with one extra dollar, and this guy sitting with two extra dollars, if, if, if these guys did not have these extra dollars, if these were also three and three, the average would have been three. But the average here is not three because we have three dollars of average, and we have extra three dollars left over, which needs to be distributed evenly among one, two, three, four, five, six people. Voila! It turns out that the average of the second group is also three and one third, or three and three and a half. Three and a half. Now, if you look at the answer choices, we can immediately knock out answer choice C and D. A, B, C, and D. C and D are gone because C and D tell us that the means are different. Means certainly are not different. They have the same means list A and B. The mean of both of the lists is three and a half. Let's talk about standard deviation now. What does standard deviation measure? You don't actually have to calculate the standard deviation to arrive at our conclusion. We we'll simply make the observation here. What does standard deviation measure? The standard deviation measures how spread out observations are, observations are from the mean. And if you want to calculate it actually, if you want to actually calculate it, what you will do is we'll take every single observation, we'll take our mean, the mean is three and a half, we, we take each observation and subtract from it the average, we square the quantity, square the diff, you know, square the deviation from the mean, whether you do the observation minus the average or the average minus the observation, it doesn't matter because the quantity is being squared, so even if the quantity inside is negative, when you square it, it doesn't matter. So we square each of the deviations from the mean, we add up all of the deviations, and we divide by the number of observations. And I hope that you will not be silly enough to spend your time during the exam, waste your time, to actually do it out. We don't have to actually do it out, we simply have to make observation. Let's do that. We don't need to do this thing. It will be too damn silly to do it. The mean is three and a half. Watch what happens here. The mean is three and a half. If mean is three and a half, you can see this guy is only half away from three. Three and a half. This guy is only half away from three and a half. This guy is only half away from three and a half. This guy is only half away from three and a half. You see they are all clustered. All four of them are clustered around three and a half. And even this guy is only one and a half away. One and a half away from three and a half. This guy is only one and a half away from three and a half. But what happens here? Here this guy is, is three and a half, this guy is already one and a half away from three and a half, this guy is already one and a half away from three and a half, by the time you get to this guy, it's two and a half away, this is two and a half away, if I hope I'm doing it right, three and a half. Three and a half. I hope I'm doing it right. Um, and six, six minus three and a half would be two and a half. Oh, so anyway, what I'm trying to point out here is that let, let me start again. Three and a half is the average. This is half away. This is uh, this is one and a half away. This is one and a half away. This is two and a half away. There you go. I can't believe it, I'm drawing such a blank. Oh, I know what I did wrong, because I knew this was not making any sense. What I did wrong was this is not one and a half away. This is only three and a half away. This is only half away. But this is one and a half away. This is one and a half away. This is two and a half away. This is two and a half away. As you can see, when we, when we take their differences, Square that quantity and we add them up. I hope that you're able to see immediately that this sum is going to be much larger. The sum of the deviation in the first list is going to be much larger than the sum of the deviation in list B. That tells us the standard deviation 
standard deviation of B is much smaller than standard deviation deviation of A. Now in reality, had it been real exam, I would not have wasted all that time here because we really don't have to understand even that part. We simply have to understand that the standard deviation are not the same. That is all they are asking here. Just by looking at the numbers, we can immediately tell the standard deviation is not going to be the same. There are different set of data. One is more spread out than the other. That's what we have to understand. So the conclusion that we arrive is that they have the same average, same means, but different standard deviation. And there is answer choice. The means are the same and the standard deviations are different. That is answer choice A. That is answer choice A. Means are the same, but the standard deviation are different. Because answer choice B says that the means are the same and so are the standard deviation. That, that is not the case. The answer is A here. Oh boy. I, that's which is why I didn't want to tackle this right now. Let's go on then, shall we? Should we go on or should we stop right here? I'm just going to stop right here. It's, otherwise it's going to be too long. I'll see tomorrow, okay? Because this one, this for some reason ended up taking too long. I don't know why. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.